I am Gabriel from Tribe 3 Productions here at Anime Magic at the Donnelly Stevens Convention Center in Rosemont, and I am here with... Mike Castro. All right, nice to meet you. So, what is the name of your business? Our company is called Nebula Amusements. And how did this get started? So in 2019, I imported a high-end augmented reality attraction from Japan called Hado. And uh, we started taking it to anime conventions and comic conventions uh, throughout Michigan. And now we're starting to branch out to other states in uh, the northern part of the country. Oh, that is pretty interesting, especially with uh, technology such so as augmented reality. So that's something that you don't see often. Right. So most people are familiar with VR, which is you put on a headset and all you see is like a virtual world everywhere around you. With AR, you put on a headset, you still see the real world. The software layers the game elements over reality like CGI. So just like when you're watching, say, Game of Thrones and Daenerys is standing next to a dragon like it's one world, that's what this is. There are no controllers or cables. It's just lightweight headsets and motion sensing wristbands. You move freely on a 20 by 30 foot court playing dodgeballs. But instead of throwing rubber balls at your opponents, you hold your hand up, throw your arm out, and a Dragon Ball Z like orb shoots out of your hand like magic. You throw your hand up, a shield appears, looks like it's from Tron, and you literally run around the court. It's a big eSport in Japan. It's growing in Europe and in other countries. And uh, between myself and two other operators in the country, we, we hope to spread it to the U.S. Oh, that sounds really ambitious, and I like the concept of it, too, because at least you get to have the fun of these games without actually hurting yourself. Yeah, because no one's actually getting hit in the face, so the only way you're going to hurt yourself is if you fall. That is very understandable. And so, and how does this work then? Uh, like, what are the basic principles of this? Like, how the technology works? Okay, so... It's actually really brilliant how the company who created it called MeLeap in Japan did it. Rather, a lot of companies right now are trying to make their own AR hardware, and it's clunky, it's big, it's expensive. What they did is they made it compatible with iPhones and iPods, and then they make a custom headset that it slides into with special lenses, space for your glasses, and they're mainly a software company. So that way, as the technology improves and grows, they can just make Hado compatible with this headset and that headset and this headset so it's it's they kind of future proof themselves in the way they designed it so the processing power is actually split between a server computer the phone that is your headset and the iPod that is your wristband the iPod co connects Bluetooth to your headset and communicates your headset goes to a closed network router with no internet and all those things plug directly into a server that connects to a server in Japan and you're basically, it's just reading your emotions. It tells where you are based off of the backdrop. When you're looking through your lens, or say a person across is looking at us, they, they recognize where we are in relation to all these little dots on here. Because if you look, there's really fine dots on there. And that's how it knows where we are for tracking. There's a main camera that picks up the whole court to know where to place the AR, where the boundaries are. And it all shows on the computer, on the screen for uh, the people watching. So it's basically the world's first physical eSport. Wow, that is, that is pretty impressive, and I love the concept of it. Do you think this is going to uh, make major waves in the U.S.? Yeah, especially in the eSport industry, because um, eSports are, the, one of the best things about eSports is how inclusive they are. It doesn't matter if you are in the wheelchair, whether you're tall or little, everyone, as long as your hands work and your eyes work, you can play. And so... Um, Esports is awesome for that, but sometimes it doesn't get the respect of physical sports, right? Now, it takes skill and hand and eye coordination. It is a sport in all rights, but uh, proponents of traditional sports feel like it lacks maybe the, uh, like I said, the physical size for health, right? With Hado, you actually run, you sweat, and and so it's it's a nice bridge for traditional sports to get to give respect to esports and for people who are in love with video games to get more active and get more physical, especially for kids who are always inside playing. So I think it's it's a nice happy medium for the future. Oh, well, definitely, and especially with what you said just now, uh, there's so many people in this generation that love to play video games, but then this is like the perfect bridge to be able to connect video games and exercise to provide some good health. Exactly. I mean, it's to the point where there's a show on Netflix called The Future Of, and in the gaming episode, they feature clips of Hado when they're talking about what the future of AR is. Because so many companies like Apple and all these big names, 
one of the issues with with uh, with AR is when when Pokemon Go Pokemon Go came out, people loved it. Um, and what they're realizing is what people want for AR to be able to see it everywhere they go and to kind of gamify the world. They have to have accurate mappings of the entire world. So when cellular technology gets that far, it's going to be more where you go to a location where it, that location is mapped out and you can do events like this. No one else is doing anything like this. The only AR you see is little Harry Potter through your phone. This is a whole nother animal. Um, and, and I'm excited to bring it to conventions because people play in their cosplay. They can be Goku and shoot the blast, Ryu from Street Fighter. We had a girl cosplaying as Katie Ari from League of Legends shooting pink orbs. And it's, it's just exciting and fun and adds a new element to the immersion of cosplay. Well, yes, definitely. That sounds amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time. And just let us know where we can be able to find you online. Uh, NebulaAmusements.com. We're also on Instagram and Facebook as Nebula Amusements. All righty. Thank you very much for your time. This is Gabriel from Tribe 3 Productions, and this is Anime Magic.